Now yeah, here's part four of our radio theory. Today we're going to talk about our final amp as the primary thing. We'll discuss a little bit of circuitry around it and the audio transformer and the voice coil. Um, so let's get started. We have a signal that will come in from our first audio amp here which was we talked about last time this triode since signal through comes through a coupling capacitor and down and comes into our grid and then is amplified through the plate to our output transformer which then goes to our voice coil and to our speaker now there's a few different things here I want to point out is C17 for one thing this capacitor here 470 micro microfarad or picofarad capacitor this has nothing to do with audio in fact it will block audio but what it's there for is to bleed off any remaining uh, RF that may be in the circuit in, in the signal still so it, it takes it down to ground this is ground here coming down so that's all its purpose is. Now this is just a, a standard amplifier tube and we're going to go into amplifier tubes and and regular uh, just tube biasing and, and how tubes operate. But this one here um, and most output tubes are biased what they call with a cathode bias meaning that they're um, the they establish bias voltage through the cathode to make the cathode slightly positive to the grid and that's done with this 120 ohm resistor right here which hooks to ground uh, on this side is negative this side would be positive in, in rel uh, relative terms so it makes the uh, cathode a little bit more positive with respect to the grid or the grid on the other hand more negative with respect to the cathode and it establishes our bias. C12 here, 0.03 capacitor, that was probably put in there uh, primarily to for just doing some adjustment on tone, um, probably to kind of reduce a little bit of the highs and, and emphasize a little bit more in the bass range just to kind of get a um, a better sound coming out now the other things I want to point out here is this little attachment right here this is how we're getting our B plus to our plate is through we always take it through our output transformer but we make the connection instead at the very bottom we're actually connecting at a tap in the transformer now the reason why they did that is what they call humbucking if you look down here, and we'll we'll deal with power supplies, but our power is coming out, which is off camera here. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, this has only one filter cap right here that is supplying power up to the tube through the transformer. There's a lot of ripple that'll still be established on this power on this DC because it only just has one single cap so that ripple is AC transformers transfer AC through they'll you put an AC signal on a transformer I don't care what frequency it is it's going to go through the transformer so I gotta do something with that AC because otherwise that's si that that ripple is 60 cycle it's hum if I don't do something with it, it's going to be translated out into the speaker and you're going to hear this hum. So, how do I get rid of it? Well, some designs they actually took and wound in series a coil with the voice coil that was in opposite direction winding wise. In other words, if, if the voice coil was wound in a clockwise manner, the other coil that's tied to it in series would be in a counterclockwise. 
Now they generally did that with what they call electrodynamic speakers. These are speakers that don't have a permanent magnet, but they have an electromagnet or a field winding. And they usually did that style of humbucking with those. This is a permanent magnet speaker. So I don't have that. And although I could do that with the voice coil, it's not as effective. Mainly because of the transformer here and that's where the hum's coming through. Um, so what I do, instead of establishing my humbucking coil here, I actually make use of my primary winding. Now the way that works is I got my signal coming in. Now part of that, it's going to split right here. The 60 cycle ripple will split and go this way and go this way. When it goes this way, it'll come down, it'll go through R4 and come back to this capacitor, back to ground. I made my complete loop of circuit. The other way, it goes up and feeds to the tube. Now the thing is, by making that split, I've actually changed its phase. When it goes through the transformer, when it, the phases are different now. This one versus this one are 180 degrees out of phase. Now, <clears throat> this winding here, being a greater number of windings, because this is tapped at the very low end, there's only just a few windings. This here will be a lot stronger going through as opposed to this one. That makes no difference. It's dealing with the incoming signal. It's dealing with this fil uh, the rest of the filtering circuit that makes the connection through here and down to here that has an effect on what's going on here. So as, it, as both of them go through, they will actually end up being equal on this side or as they try to make it through and actually be canceled out. If I would have done a center tap, the amount of current that's in both sides, it will be different. A lot of it deals with the impedances and stuff like that, that uh, the resistance to the signal is the other reason why we'll have an equal signal here. Now I'll get into that when I do tubes and how there's the actual internal resistance or impedance inside the tube affects what goes on here. But in this session, just accept the fact that they're 180 degrees out of phase and that they're equal strength, so that they cancel. Now, the only thing we're canceling here is just a hum. As far as the radio signal, the audio signal getting through, it has no effect on it and it makes it through. Now, one other little thing here, and you don't see this too often on schematics, but they have a note one here. And if you read note one, it says voice coil disconnected for resistance measurement. Now, what they mean by is, is the voice coil is connected in parallel with the secondary of the transformer. Now, this secondary is supposed to have a 0.5 ohm resistance on it. The voice coil, which is real hard to see, is 3.2 ohms. If I leave them connected and I measure them, the resistance is going to be a little different. But also, I won't know what I'm actually measuring um, since they're in parallel. I don't know if the coil is fine here on the secondary or the voice coil is fine. Um, I can kind of probably get a general idea since they've actually had two different values put here, but under normal circumstances I can't tell. So I actually do need to disconnect them. Anytime you're checking your transformer and you get to the secondary on the output, you need to dis disconnect one end. That way you can get a good reading. It's separate. They're not in parallel anymore. You can get the accurate reading of the secondary as well as the voice coil and know if either they got continuity and they're working fine, they got the proper resistance relative. Your resistances are never going to be always perfectly matched to what's in the schematic, but you can tell and when you're dealing with something like this you can you can tell you know the main thing is that you do have some continuity between 
on each coil. Now, that's pretty much it on this. Uh, the next section where we'll deal with the uh, rectifier and the simple power uh, supply that this radio has, and we'll talk about uh, a little more other types of power supplies. Uh, that's about all I got. Now, for future, uh, another series I'm going to do will deal with tubes and how they're biased, how they operate, and, and as I do that, I'll pick, you know, like audio amplifier tubes and uh, how they operate and how they're biased, and we'll discuss more detail about the circuit, and same way with our detector and IF and so forth, but I'll talk more in depth about the different circuits that the tubes are fit in as we go over the tubes themselves and how they operate. So until next time, that's it. Thank you.